imagine a region stretching from high mountaintops through temperate woodland, soft tropical forests, and equatorial jungles, past great rivers, lakes, and mangroves, through a coastline fringed by glorious sandy beaches, cave riddle cliffs, and pinnacles. Imagine a vast archipelago scattered across 5,000 kilometers of ocean. Great volcanoes mark the horizon, surrounded by seas and coral gardens teeming with fish and providing havens for turtles and dolphins. This is Southeast Asia, a region that cradles a treasure trove of plant, animal, and marine species. Despite occupying only 3% of the world's surface, the ASEAN is home to 20% of all known species, making it critically important to global environmental sustainability. Elephants, deer, and wild cattle stalked by stealthy predators. Great apes, gibbons, strange monkeys foraging on the treetops, wide-eyed tarsiers, giant reptiles, and a vast complexity of gorgeous butterflies and beetles. The rafflesia, jade vine, medanelia, and other rare plants also form part of the region's treasures. ASEAN has one-third or 284,000 square kilometers of the world's coral reefs. It is among the richest biodiversity pools all over the globe. Biodiversity is the very heart of our environment. It is the total richness of all the living forms and life processes of our planet. It is the web of life that includes the full range of ecosystems, the component species, and the genetic variety of those species produced by nature or shaped by men. Biodiversity brings enormous benefits to mankind from direct harvesting of plants and animals for food, medicine, fuel, construction materials, and other uses to aesthetic, cultural, recreational, and research values. Benefits to ecosystems include climate and water regulation, the creation and protection of soils, helping to reduce floods and soil erosion, shoreline protection, and providing natural controls of agricultural pests, all of which promote creative evolution. Within the ASEAN region alone, these services are estimated to be worth over 200 billion US dollars annually. This amount can save 56 million victims of tuberculosis over a 10-year period and can feed 862 million people annually for six years. Biodiversity is our wealth. It is our shared natural heritage. The natural world is not just a collection of magnificent and wonderful species. The people of ASEAN also depend upon the vast biodiversity around them to supply their daily needs. Millions of people depend on sustainably harvested fish, timber, and fruits for nutrition and their livelihoods. It is estimated that 80% of the income of the rural poor is derived from the local biodiversity. Wood remains the most common fuel throughout the region. In fact, much of the leap and development of the countries of ASEAN during the period of 1970 to 1990 is founded on the sale of commercial timber. Evidence of man's dependence is everywhere. Not only the most of ASEAN's original cultures embrace the concept of maintaining a healthy balance with nature, but the biodiversity of the region also forms an integral part of this living cultures. This source of life, however, is confronted with a host of threats. Today, biodiversity is fast becoming endangered by modern development and by the sheer pressures and demands of the growing human population. 
our wasteful and inefficient consumption patterns also affect the environment that nourishes us. Eating too much meat, for one, requires more resource to raise animals. Consuming endangered animals to satisfy our cravings causes species decline. Using non-recyclable food containers affect the environment as well. The choices we make in our daily consumption of food and other goods have an ecological footprint and often larger ramifications that we are unaware of. The big issue is supply versus demand, and despite its great wealth and biodiversity, and dependence upon the products and services it provides, the ASEAN region is losing its biodiversity at an unprecedented rate. Massive deforestation is also a major concern. Forests are being cleared for timber and agricultural development. Seas and coral reefs are being overfished, damaged and polluted. The valuable species are being collected unsustainably. The introduction of invasive alien species into ecosystems affects indigenous species. A classic example is the case of the janitor fish which infested the Philippines' Laguna Lake and disrupted balance in its ecosystem. The facts and figures are alarming. Out of ASEAN's 64,800 species, 2% or 1,312 are endangered. Seven of the world's 25 hotspots are in Southeast Asia. 80% of coral reefs are at risk due to destructive fishing practices. Wherever man has destroyed too much forest cover, destructive floods and droughts are a constant reminder of the vital importance to protect this biodiversity. More and more new environmental issues are emerging. Ultimately, the loss of biodiversity is one of the greatest threats to the people of ASEAN. The Millennium Ecosystem Assessment reported that humans have increased extinction levels dramatically over the past decades at 100 to 1,000 times the normal background rate. Extinction is forever. And with every species lost, the natural ecosystems that ASEAN's people once called home become biologically poorer. The critical dilemma now faced by the nations of ASEAN is to try and meet the ever-growing demands from its burgeoning populations with ever-shrinking natural resources. Challenged by the unprecedented loss of biodiversity in the region they call home, the 10 ASEAN member states are working together to protect their biodiversity. The need for these countries to collaborate in their efforts to protect biodiversity is obvious. Nine of the 10 countries of ASEAN share the same rich seas and fisheries. Five countries of ASEAN are linked by the mighty Mekong River. Three countries share the great island of Borneo. Through cooperation, the countries of ASEAN pool their knowledge, make better use of their species, and find fair ways to share the benefits. All these countries have responded in their own ways as signatories of the Convention on Biological Diversity and as members of several other international conservation programs by controlling the trade in wild species and by establishing their own networks of protected areas. Finally, in 1999, the recognition of these shared responsibilities spawned the development of the ASEAN Regional Center 
for biodiversity conservation. With funding support from the European Union, the ASEAN Regional Center for Biodiversity Conservation coordinated work with the ASEAN governments to help them conserve biodiversity. From 1999 to 2005, the center successfully established the bridge that fostered strong collaboration among ASEAN countries and between ASEAN and the European Union's partner institutions. The ASEAN Regional Center for Biodiversity Conservation promoted the adoption of common standards and best practices, as well as the development of sound policies in all matters of biodiversity management. It gained recognition in the regional and global arenas for biodiversity conservation. From Southeast Asia's highest mountain to wetland reserves, and one of the world's largest cave systems, the center helped revitalize the concept of ASEAN Heritage Parks. These sites represent the best examples of ASEAN's wide range of major habitat and shall serve as a source of wonder and pride for the nations of the region. They are one of the best ways to educate our children and give them a greater appreciation of nature and their surrounding environment. The objectives of ASEAN's Heritage Parks are to generate greater awareness, appreciation, and conservation of ASEAN's rich natural heritage through the creation of a regional network of protected areas. The ASEAN Heritage Parks cover a wide variety of habitat types and different biogeographic regions. An incredible abundance of life still thrives. Swirling tornadoes of thousands of fish or a million bats streaming from their caves at dusk. To be labeled as an ASEAN Heritage Park is certainly an honor, but also a considerable responsibility. These parks have been accepted on behalf of ASEAN to be showcase examples for the protection of certain habitats and species. It is each country's responsibility to ensure that the best possible level of protection is accorded to the park and that, in return, the park will benefit from the assistance of the ASEAN Heritage Parks Program. The ASEAN Heritage Parks Program is a brave venture of leadership and a statement of commitment and collaboration. From 11 in the 80s, we now have 27 ASEAN Heritage Parks. This number will grow in the coming years as more and more of the ASEAN member states become conscious of the need to work and protect certain areas with rich biodiversity value. In 2005, the ASEAN and the European Union signed a financing agreement to fund a new institution that would carry on the work of the ASEAN Regional Center for Biodiversity Conservation and to further enhance the ASEAN's collaborative capacity to fulfill obligations of its member states to relevant biodiversity treaties and convention. On September 27, 2005, during the ninth informal ASEAN ministerial meeting, the environment ministers of all ASEAN member states signed an agreement establishing the ASEAN Center for Biodiversity. The ASEAN Center for Biodiversity is a regional center for excellence. It picks up from the good lessons and experiences from a previous undertaking of the ASEAN Regional Center for Biodiversity Conservation. Our vision is that the ASEAN Biodiversity Resources is protected, conserved, managed, and sustainably used so that its benefits can be equitably shared among the ASEAN member states for their economic, social, and environmental well-being. The ASEAN Center for Biodiversity contributes to the reduction of the current rate of loss of biodiversity by enhancing regional cooperation, strengthening capacities of ASEAN member states and biodiversity stakeholders, program development and policy coordination, human and institutional capacity development, biodiversity information management, public and leadership awareness of biodiversity values, 
and sustainable financing mechanism. I am from Vietnam and I'm from the Philippines. This is our shared heritage. Let's, Let's protect, protect it together. While success had been achieved in various fronts, much remains to be done. We need to engage and mobilize the support of every sector. We need the support of everyone. The ASEAN region is one of the richest remaining natural lands left on our planet. However, it would take the dedicated effort and combined will of many different people at every level to conserve this remarkable arena. The collaboration between the ASEAN and the European Union, the growing responsibilities of the ASEAN Center for Biodiversity, the ASEAN Heritage Parks Program, and the continuing commitment of the ASEAN member states to reduce biodiversity loss represent the concrete steps towards a brighter future with the nations of this incredible region joined in a combined conservation program dedicated to preserving biodiversity. If we work together, ASEAN's treasures can still be saved. Mankind and nature need each other to survive. Humans are the primary drivers of biodiversity loss. We are part of the problem, but we are also at the heart of the solution. It is our obligation to see and strike the right balance of meeting our needs and protecting our environment. We have to remember that over 500 million lives are at stake unless we address Southeast Asia's endangered biodiversity. Our living planet belongs not only to us, but to future generations as well. We must safeguard, conserve, and nurture this precious heritage. By working together, we can pass on a better life to our children and their children. Together, let us save our ASEAN treasure, our heritage, our biodiversity.